Good morning, Church. On this first Sunday of Advent, our Old Testament scripture reading is Isaiah 64, 1-9. through 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, nor ear has perceived. No eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned, because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, takes us away. There is no one who calls on your name, or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember our iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. If only you would just tear open the heavens, God, and come down. Isaiah is pleading with God on behalf of the Israelites. Many who had been displaced during the Babylonian aggression had been allowed to return to Jerusalem, and things weren't going well at all. God had miraculously raised up Cyrus of Persia to defeat the Babylonians, to let the children of Israel return home, and to provide resources for their journey and for the rebuilding of the temple. But their return had been painful, to say the least. The city and the temple lay in ruins. Their neighbors had made it difficult to rebuild and internal divisions had impeded progress. The people of Israel, who had not been exiled, were clashing with those who had returned. They were seemingly insurmountable power struggles over status, social standing, and political and religious authority. Clearly, the restoration of Jerusalem to past glory, the way they had envisioned it, was not going to happen, at least not in the time and ways expected. And God seemed distant again. So the Israelites had acted the way they usually did when things were not to their liking and when God didn't provide what they wanted when they wanted it. They rebelled. They turned away from God. They complained. They lamented their fate. And the prophet Isaiah was their voice. If only you would just tear open the heavens, come down, and make the mountains quake at your power. If only you would make your name known to your enemies so the nations would tremble in your presence. If only you would make things like the good old days when you took good care of us, but you got mad when we sinned and you hid yourself when we did wrong. This is really kind of appalling, the way Isaiah argues that their sin is really God's fault because God has deserted them and basically has given up on them. He says they don't call God's name anymore and they don't bother to hold on to God. God's people are in darkness, carried away by sin, like leaves withered and swept away by the wind. At least their blame of God acknowledges their need for him. 
We haven't read today's psalm yet, and I'd like to share it with you because it sounds so much like Isaiah's lament. It is Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7 and 17 through 19. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim. Shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. This psalm is a congregational lament in which the people of God blame him for their sadness, yet ask God to restore them, make his face shine upon them, save them, and give them life. Then they will call on God's name, they say, and never turn back from him. Verse 14 says, Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see. There is hope in a prayer like this, in a prayer that voices a need for God, for his help, his light, and his salvation. Theologian W. Paul Jones wrote in Trumpet at Full Moon, Hope is the simple trust that God has not forgotten the recipe for manna. There is power in hope. Methodist pastor, artist, and poet Jan Richardson, whose blessings have blessed us repeatedly, wrote that hope is elemental. It is made of some of the strongest stuff in the universe. It endures. Hope does not depend on our mood, our disposition, our desires. Hope does not wait until we are ready for it, until we have prepared ourselves for its arrival. It doesn't hold itself apart from us until we have worked through the worst of our sorrow, anger, or fear. This is precisely where hope seeks us out, standing with us in the midst of what most weighs us down. Mourning the passing of her beloved husband, Gary, Jan Richardson wrote in The Cure for Sorrow, this blessing of hope. So may we know the hope that is not just for someday, but for this day, here, now, in this moment that opens to us. Hope not made of wishes, but of substance. Hope made of sinew and muscle and bone, hope that has breath and a beating heart, hope that will not keep quiet and be polite, hope that knows how to holler when it is called for, hope that knows how to sing when there seems little cause, hope that raises us from the dead. Not someday, but this day every day, again and again and again. 
There is hope in the prayer of Isaiah. Look at verse 8 of Isaiah 64. But now, Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay. You are our potter. All of us are the work of your hand. And then Isaiah says something like, If only you wouldn't be angry. Don't hold our sins against us forever. If only. Those words are words that express hope for the future. There is a way. and God is that way. There is help for the weak. God is our help. There is light in the darkness. God is our light. God is the potter who has both the power and the desire to mold us in his image. If we will only surrender ourselves to God and allow him, sincerely ask him to make us mold us, fill us, and use us. There is a freeing in surrendering ourselves to God. When we trust that God is in control, is present, and has the plan, we are freed for wonderment, surprise, gratitude, like a child delighted by the magic of Christmas morning. And we are reminded that the God who made us and saved us can tear open the heavens and come down to us in new ways. Jesus has new beginnings for us if we will only listen for the Holy Spirit's direction and wait and watch for Jesus to come afresh in our lives and light our paths. Hallelujah. Amen.